All right, good afternoon and welcome to John Box Watercolor. Today we're going to be painting a scene from Mexico City, but before we get started, if you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up and if you like what you see, consider subscribing. I'm going to have three to four new videos coming out each week. So I'm going to go ahead and put our reference photo over on the right hand side of the screen so you can take a look. I've gone ahead and got my sketch set up down here. Now <clears throat> I've kind of taken this reference photo and sort of pushed it to the left in my sketch. I've sort of omitted that left hand building so I've just got this kind of distant tower building in the back and then this large side building here on the right. I'm going to have my painting be a little bit more sunny um, compared to our reference photo here just to get more contrast between the lights and the darks. Um, but other than that, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to spray my paper here. I've went ahead and pre-wet my palette just to get some of those pigments working. And I'm actually going to take this flat brush here and just add a little bit of water to my sky. I want to try to keep things fairly light. Got some eraser shavings there. I want to keep things fairly light and just a tad on the warmer side. So I've got a kind of a gray just from keeping a, a dirty palette. I always recommend that you leave your palettes alone. Try to avoid washing them. Um, you can often neutralize and get some little bit more realistic colors, I think, from a, from a dirty palette. All right, I'm going to cool it off a little bit down there. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. Okay, let's go ahead and start adding some color here. I've got a little cobalt, a little ultramarine. I'm just adding some pigment over here to this building. This is all going to be painted over in our second wash. Let's warm some things up here. I want to keep it warm, I think, through this background. And I've got some umbrellas and things I'm going to cut out later as well. I'm going to grab just some more gray, and we're just going to pull that through right there. And now for our foreground, we're going to really warm things up. I'm going to neutralize that just a little bit. All right. In those warm colors I'm pulling there, I've got yellow ochre, burnt sienna, and then I've already mentioned my blues up here. I've got some ultramarine, cobalt, uh, cerulean, and lavender. So let's just keep working our way down here. And as we get lower in our foreground, I'm going to darken things up. Try to add more and more pigment. I'm going to throw a little bit in that background there. Okay. Let's keep darkening things up here. And I'm okay with a little bit of that kind of blue showing through. I want to keep this foreground interesting, right? I'm only going to do one wash, so if I want to create some interest, I've got to do it on this pass, all right? So I think that looks pretty good. I'm going to go up to our sky here and do just a little bit of work. I'm going to grab some of that darker color we've got going and, you know, I'm tempted to add some clouds, but I think what I'm going to do is just take my paper towel and just lighten a few areas. Keep it simple. Okay. Yeah. I think that looks nice. All right. Let's dab out a few areas that we're going to want to keep bright. I'm just touching on some of those figures I've got. Maybe some of those umbrellas. Maybe just tone down that very background edge a little bit there. Okay, I think this looks pretty good. Last thing I'm going to do real quick, just to make it easier to darken up when I come through on the second wash, I'm going to throw a little bit more pigment on this building here. The darker I get it on my first wash, the easier it'll be to darken it on the second. So I'm just going to add a little bit of paint there. Okay, I think we're good here. I'm going to let this dry and we will come back and start our second wash. All right, we are back. This is now completely dry and we're going to start on our second wash. As always, I'm going to work from objects that are further in the distance to those that are closer. So we're going to start with this tower back here. Now I'm going to spray my paper and get the top of it fairly wet. I want to, if I can, try to get a little bit of a haze going. 
in the background here, I want to have the edges of this building be just a touch soft. So we're going to have to kind of work through that. I'm going to keep it somewhat cooler. Maybe cool just in comparison to what we have been using. Everything's fairly warm. So that cool should give us a little bit of a contrast. And I'm just kind of dabbing my brush here. You have to be careful when you're painting on paper that's wet. So I'm just kind of touching along and watching my edges to see what they're doing. And I can already tell it's too dry down here. I think it's too dry in general. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray just a little bit more water on there. Let me grab my smaller brush. All right, let's just keep working along here. Just adding some, some faint details. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and add some water to that tower and let it run down here in just a second. Keep coming through here and letting my brush move quickly. All right. I'm going to grab just some pure water, come at the top here and just dab it along there. And I'm going to let that run and leave it alone for a minute. When you get your paper that wet, sometimes you just got to stop, watch it for a minute to see how it how it does. The more you can let watercolor paint itself, the better. So make sure you're giving it time to do that. All right, I'm going to keep it a little bit darker along the top here. I think this tone of gray we've got going looks really nice. I'm going to keep working here. <clears throat> Over here, I've got neutral gray, and then this is a, or excuse me, neutral tint, neutral gray, and a warm gray. Just coming along there to add some dark kind of highlights and things on the top. I've got to be careful with that because, again, this is in the distance, so I don't want to add too much. All right, I'm going to keep working through. And again, you'll notice as well, I'm leaving some gaps of light. Help kind of create some interest. Need to warm that up just a touch. And then we're going to get darker as we get closer to this sort of activity line here where we've got our figures and umbrellas, cars and things, because we're going to want we're going to want that contrast. All right, so that's looking nice. I'm going to give this another spray. And <clears throat> I think I'm going to come in here and just soften a few of these edges along, along the top here, especially kind of over towards this building. And I want to soften that as well. Okay, it's not too bad. I'm going to keep fiddling with it. All right, let's keep working our way down. I want to be careful around these umbrellas. Okay, that looks nice. All right, keep on working down here. All right. Okay. Now I want to add some more water to our main shape here. I, I really want to try to get that a little bit. I just want to soften it up, and I've got to be, I've got to be really careful here. And I just kind of sprayed decently close right on the top of that tower. I'm going to add a little bit more dark paint to it. And 
just going to dab with my brush there. I'm going to leave it alone for a minute. And again, that's kind of what you've got to do with watercolor because it's always moving, it's always changing. As it dries, it's going to lighten. As it sits here wet, colors are melting together. So sometimes if you're unsure if you like where you are, just leave it alone for a minute. Let it do its own thing and you keep working through and you can come back and reevaluate. So I'm okay with where this is for now. It's going to need a little work, but I'm going to start on this building here. The one thing that I'm a little concerned about is I may have gotten this too dark because I need this to be a fairly dark, strong figure here. And if this is too dark, I'm not going to be able to get that depth that I want. So let's go ahead and see what we can do here. I'm going to grab my larger brush. And I want to keep this building on the warmer side. All right. I'm going to try to, as I paint this, go ahead and incorporate some directional lines as well. Just some kind of, could be windows or, you know, how these sort of skyscraper type buildings are constructed. All right. I think that looks okay. Just going to keep working here. All right. It's not too bad. Let's darken some things up here. And I may, I, to be totally honest, I messed up a little on my perspective lines here. These look good, but I flattened these out too early. They shouldn't get flat until they're about here, and so these should be all slanted down. But you know what, we're gonna make it work. Just coming through here and just touching along this edge. Okay. Gonna add some really dark paint in there, see if I can't get anything to show up after this is dry. Just gonna grab my pure dark paint there. And you know what I did too? I can't believe I did that. I cut into my umbrella there. That is no good. Let's see if we can't fix it. Always, always, always have a paper towel on hand. It is watercolors really only eraser. Let's give this a spray, keep everything alive. I'm squinting my eyes just a little bit, trying to get a feel. I'm gonna use this palette here for my cooler colors since our, our background is kind of cooler. I'm gonna come back over here and, and work a little bit. I'll pick up a little bit of that warm stuff for the bottom. Okay. All right, that's not too bad. This building does need to be lightened though. I'm just using that paper towel to kind of dab things out, give it a little bit of an atmospheric effect. All right, now down towards the bottom here, we're gonna have to get very, very dark, right? The biggest thing we want watercolor is gonna be that contrast. So I'm gonna have to come in here very dark, and work around some of these umbrellas people. And I'll show you here, we're going to start abstracting some things. Once we get down to about that head height, I don't want to continue that darkness down. I want to make sure I'm leaving room to bring other shapes and figures up into that dark kind of, I don't know if I call it a horizon line. I guess it is a horizon line. It's just kind of strange to think of horizon lines when you're doing a, a cityscape like this. It's really just more of a ground level line, I think is probably a bit more accurate. All right, I'm gonna come along the top here and I'm just touching some of that dark paint into this lower portion here. And again, I'm just gonna let it touch and it'll run down and do its own thing. The less I paint, the better. 
And I'm actually surprised here. I think our, our building turned out fairly nice. Just gonna dab along there a little bit. Let's come up here. Add just a couple of what could be antennas and things, little towers. Okay, that's looking very nice. Really liking this contrast of light to dark on our building back here. I think that looks very nice. I'm wondering if it's... I've got to be careful because I like the way it looks now, but I know it's going to dry lighter. Just coming through, just adding a little bit more add some dimensions up there maybe just a touch at the top I may come back and end up lightening that up I'm just gonna let it sit here for a minute all right let's work down here I'm gonna grab this is kind of my I like to use this brush for figures and things it's actually broken in half but it works just fine it's very stout and old. It doesn't carry much water, so it's excellent for getting really thick uh, bits of paint. So I'm going to grab some cool colors. I'm just going for a very dark mixture of paint here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just dab here in the background. We're going to turn those into figures as sort of our background figures, and then we're going to work on our, our main ones here up front. So all I'm going to do is I'm just kind of dabbing my brush a little bit, just pulling a few legs down from the, the darkness peck there. All right, that's not too bad. Let's work on our main figures here. And you can see also this is lightened up again, and I actually think it looks, looks better. It looks okay now. It may end up being just perfect. All right, let's do some white paint. That's just Chinese white. And let's do that right there. Oh, I gotta be careful, that really bled in, didn't it? Okay, that's no big deal. Let's do some lavender here. Do the lavender, pick something up very dark for that figure. I think what I want to do over here is I want to leave this figure completely or have the torso white and then I'll darken the other aspects later on. All right, let's darken up that lower half. Just pulling down, just pulling down a little something to let you know that this figure has some, some legs. This guy is kind of walking across. I'll kind of splay those out. All right. What else? What else? Hmm. I wanted. I've got to be careful here. Let's see. How do I want to do this? I'm going to lighten up this figure here. I wanted to kind of give him a vest or her, not really sure. Okay, let's see. Yeah, that's a little dark. And that's just burnt sienna I'm grabbing. I'm just just dotting along through here. Okay. Give this individual a vest. I'm going to vary things up a little bit. Maybe something like that. I don't really like the look of that vest. It didn't come out very well. All right, just lengthening that out a little bit. All right, we'll keep working here. We'll give this a spray, just keep it alive. Let's work on this taxi over here. 
And I need these cars to be pretty good. I think our figures look kind of weak right now. Let's grab a little yellow ochre. Let's pull straight across there. And then we're immediately going to darken it up. You always want to darken the bottoms of your cars. And see, I'm going to leave a little bit on that right side as just pure white paper, just to kind of give that idea that maybe you can see the other side just slightly. All right, let's just do, eh, I don't know. We'll just do a different color for this back car here. Get dark with it, right? We're getting at the bottom here. And just pull that over. There's a shadow there. A little abstract work, just adding some little, little details. Okay. We've got this figure over here. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bit of water in that torso. I'm gonna try to not have that dark background bleed in too much. Have it right like that. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's get a little dark paint. Give this thing uh, just a little grill or something on our car. Let's connect that shadow underneath it as well. I'm gonna keep these shadows pretty dark and I guess we'll keep them warm. Our ground's pretty warm, so I think that would make sense. All right. And I just want just a little gap under that car. Not much, not much. Okay. Again, I'm just working here to create that illusion of detail. I'm trying to paint as much as I can without really painting anything. All right, now let's work on some details for these folks. I'm going to lighten that face up a little bit. Maybe we'll add another figure over here. It seems a little, a little barren, I guess. All right, somebody. And again, you'll notice I didn't sketch that. Just a little wave of the brush. We're just going to abstract this person in, maybe walking out of that shadow over there across the street. May have to come back later to add his face just because it's so dark over here. All right, continuing along. All right, just, just doing a bit more abstract work here. Okay, I wanted to give this guy on the left a jacket. May bleed in too much, but that's okay. All right. Let's get our shadows done here. I'm going to use my smaller brush for those shadows. But I'm going to use this slightly larger brush just to mix the paint up. And that's, that's fairly warm. Let's get a little bit more water in there. A little burnt sienna. All right. Let's get our shadows in here. Yep. Again, I always want to be going dark with those shadows. And if you can connect them to other figures and shapes, that's, that is all the better. All the better. Okay. A couple little shadows out here. You know what? I need to add. I don't like how separated all these folks are. So I'm going to stick another figure. And pick up 
a warmer color here, something that will really stick out. Right there. Yeah, perfect. Just to join, a, just to join everything up a little bit, our, our characters are kind of all spread out. There. A little more burnt sienna. Okay. I think we're looking pretty good here. All right. So I'm going to let this dry. You know what? One last thing before I do that. Let's do maybe just some little kind of lead in lines here. Yeah, something like that. All right. I'm going to let this dry. We're going to add our final details and we'll finish this painting up. All right. We are back again for our last segment here and we're going to finish this painting up. First thing I do before I put some gouache on the brush to add our highlights, I'm going to add a few vertical lines and things. I'm just kind of using whatever paint we've already got in that palette over there, just trying to keep it thick. A few vertical lines here. These could be, I'll draw some little, yeah, some sort of a uh, little light post, although it looks kind of strange. It looks almost like a palm tree. <laughs> Let me, I'm going to change that a little bit. Let's keep it, uh, let's just keep the vertical line. I'm not going to add those things there. Perfect. I've got my paper towel beside me, so that was no big deal. Add one over here. Big vertical line. Okay, perfect. All right, what else? What other dark things do I want to add? I'll darken up that individual's jacket just slightly. I think all this looks pretty good in here. You just add a few kind of dots, right? It could be signs, little uh, street level walking lights and things. All right, let's grab our gouache here. And I'm using <clears throat> just some white titanium artist gouache. I uh, just get this from Blix. You can use any type of gouache really, as long as it's Typically, you want to use either Chinese white or titanium white. I like titanium white. It's got a little bit more of a brilliance to it that really helps um, highlight your figures. And then we're going to work through here. Definitely want to focus on my figures here that are surrounded by darkness. That little bit of gouache is just going to help bring them out and put them a little bit more centerfold here. And you want to try to vary it. So like I'll skip a few characters. Maybe <clears throat> some of them get head and both shoulders. Some of them just get, I'll just do one shoulder since he's kind of already got something going on there. Add a little line there. We're going to add some, all right, some little headlights. Maybe a little vertical line, a few dots here. And all you're doing is you're kind of just, I like to think of it as, as just dressing the painting up a little bit. Okay. All right. Just taking one last kind of look here. I think we're finished. I think we are finished. I'm going to sign this and then we're going to take a look and see what do we do well and what could we have done perhaps a bit better. All right. Always fun to see the finished product and put your signature on it. Okay, let's take our tape off. Let's see, overall, very pleased with this painting. I think it came out really nice. Um, well, I guess we'll start with the things we could have done better first. Let's see here. You know, at first I thought our figures were maybe just a bit weak, they were lacking something they just didn't look very dynamic but after we added this one here and this individual over here i think that improved they could have been a little bit cleaner though 
Um, I would have liked to maybe have these umbrellas a little bit higher just so that the dark underneath them I could have extended just to cut away a little bit and create more contrast. You always want to have your lightest lights next to your darkest darks. That's why you see on this windshield, it's from the very first wash, but I bring down this building and it gets darker and darker and darker until it gets right here. Same thing with the umbrellas. I just wish I had some more of that dark paint from the background underneath them. So I could have raised them up a little bit. Um, honestly, I, I like this painting. Um, I think that's about it. I mean, obviously there are a number of things I could have improved on, but overall very happy. Uh, I like the transition here of light to dark in this background building. I think the fact that we kept this cool and this one a little bit warmer really helps add that depth to illustrate that, hey, this is this is in the background. I think this building came out great. Figures look nice. Cars look nice. Yeah, overall very pleased. Uh, so if you stuck with me to the end, I appreciate it. And again, consider subscribing. All of these demos are for sale and I will have... I need to upload all these, but they're going to be in my store. The link for which is in the description. So thanks again and keep on painting.